Good morning, Mark Twain parents. It's Mrs. Hennessy. Uh, today's video is gonna be kind of for you because unfortunately we've all been thrown into this together and I know that uh, you're having to pick up the ball and run with it and you may be pulling your hair out. So I'm gonna do my best to try to bridge the gap of what I can do and how I can help you. Um, I'm here anytime, just text me, find a way, and, and, and I'll get back to you just as quick as I can with any questions that you have. Like I said, I'm learning right along with you. Um, I've never taught from home before, so this is, this is uncharted waters for us all. So I know that it's hard and it's, it's, it's a challenge for us all. So um, as far as school, right now, we've been told we're out through April 30th. I think, honestly, it's gonna be through the end of the school year. So, what is the district offering us? Well, they're not really offering us a whole lot of information right now. They're just saying um, you can either do nothing, um, you can contact your parents and kinda of do your own thing, or um, the parents can just do their own thing, whatever. So that's kinda of where we are right now still. Um, they've told us that by April 3rd, they will get the teachers some sort of information of expectations. I don't know what that's gonna be, but so we'll kinda see with that. Um, I have a feeling that that um, some of you are gonna be really, really good teachers with your kids. You know, you know them way better than I do, so I think that some of you are gonna be like, wow, my kid is so smart. And some of you are gonna be like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna pull my hair out. Um, hopefully you can find a way to make it work because what else can we do right now, right? So um, I know at our school site we have um, lunches, breakfast and lunches that you can pick up for your kids. They also have just regular work packets that you can pick up for your kids and you're more than welcome to do that. Um, if you wanna have something a little bit more similar to like what our school day normally is, um, I'm gonna snap a picture and kind of send that over to you so you have an idea of what a normal day in fourth grade is kind of like. I mean, this is this leaves out a bunch, but this is kind of the basics, the bare bones. And so that way, if you wanted to set up a schedule that's similar to what school was, you can. Obviously, you don't have to. Whatever you wanna do is fine. But, um, so I'm gonna snap a picture of it. I just kind of scratched it down on some paper and hopefully you understand my chicken scratch. So, uh, um, I think probably the most important thing for you to do is to get your child at some point onto some sort of a schedule. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for. Um, don't make them get up at 6 a.m. and start school then. You're not gonna get as much out of them as if, in, if you let them sleep in just a little bit. So my suggestion is to let them start their day maybe closer to nine o'clock or so after they've had a chance to wake up, stretch, go get some breakfast, maybe even start some good habits of making beds and stuff like that kind of before we start our day and then getting ready to start. So having that schedule ready, um, having that workspace ready um, with all of their supplies in it, that's gonna be super important. Um, maybe having some spiral notebooks, making sure it's distraction free zone for them, any sort of little reminders you can kind of put up in that little workspace for them to kind of remind them of what to do next or how to do this or that. Um, something else that might be good is some like calm music, maybe some meditation or kind of spa music kind of thing. Um, sometimes that really helps, especially kids who are a little bit more high strung than others, kind of helps bring them down just a little bit because it's pretty calming, so. Um, our day usually starts out with a little bit of silent reading in the morning, so that's a time that you don't really have to be right there with them, so you can tell them, go ahead and get started. Timers are probably gonna be a really good, important thing for you today, I mean, for you in general. Um, setting timers so that you can um, get them on hearing the, the they, they've been learning about missions and how the bells were so important at the missions, hearing the timer and knowing that that means switch to another subject or tie it up and get ready to switch to another subject. Um, after they do their silent reading, any AR quizzes that they're ready for, you can start them off on that. Um, and they should be able to do both of those completely independent without you. So you don't have to hold their hand for that. Um, the next section of our day is usually reading and writing. And you should be able to kill two birds with one stone if you have them read and write about social studies and science topics. 
So right now we're just kind of hot and heavy in the middle of the gold rush in science. We're just getting ready to start rocks. So I put a few different things on our Google Classroom for both of those that might help guide you in that area. They have their social studies and science books with them. So don't be afraid to have them open that book, find that section and start somewhere, okay? Um, in their books, they always have comprehension questions at the end of each section. You can have them read a section and then do the comprehension questions and then you can check them. You can have them read a section and summarize it in their own words, tell what it was about. You can have them define the bold words if you want to. Um, you can have them sequence the main events in that section. Um, those are all really good um, things for them to do with their social studies and science topics. Um, when we do writing, like essay writing, there are three different types of writing that they've learned this year. They've learned informational, where you're basically just giving information on a topic, five paragraph essay. Um, on Google Classroom, there should be a, like an outline for that. They have learned opinion writing, where it's a similar outline, but they're putting in more of their opinion and they're stating the main reasons why they feel that way. And supporting it with text evidence is the big important thing for them at this grade level. Um, and then the last style is narrative writing. So that's basic story writing. You know, there's the beginning, a middle, and an end. There's characters. Um, dialogue is something that they're weak on using those quotation mark rules. So you can always Google little videos and things like that on quotation mark rules and try to really set that in stone. Um, after they're done with reading and writing, give them some sort of a break. So you can do PE. I'm gonna um, put on Google Classroom some really cool PE things today. Um, so let them relax, give their brain a break, you know, get a snack, things like that, because they're gonna be ready. That's usually recess time for us. Um, the reading and writing section will probably take them an hour. So depending on what exactly they're doing. Um, when we do essay writing, I forgot to tell you, um, Sometimes we do it in big chunks. It depends on the kid and their ability level. Some kids can only write a paragraph in one sitting and it'll take them a half an hour. Some kids can bust out a five paragraph essay in a half an hour. So usually for writing about a half an hour or so for them to write and then go back and do some editing with that. And then for a final step, you can always have them publish it. You can have them type it and they can do that independently. You can have them type it on Google Docs. You can have them share it with me or however you wanna do that. Um, hopefully we'll get some more guidance on expectations soon. Um, so then their last part of the day is usually math. And so math for them, we usually start with some sort of a warm up, and usually it's four problems, adding, subtracting, multiplying, dividing. You can just make up four problems. Doesn't have to be anything fancy or special. Um, start out at a certain ability level and when you think they've got that ability level mastered then make the numbers get bigger you know so instead of you know three digits times one digit go two digits times two digits or three digits times two digits or four digits times two digits if your kid doesn't know their math facts this is a great time to practice or if you um, if your child still hasn't mastered cursive great time to practice okay um, so then with math, after they're done with their little warm up, then we can head into their, their video. And their videos that, that I've been kind of attaching um, are through YouTube and through Eureka. And so you can just Google, or on YouTube, uh, Eureka, fourth grade, module five, lesson 18. And it'll come up with their lesson instructional video. And they're used to the term instructional video. So they know that you watch an instructional video differently than watching a Disney video. You know, it's a different kind of watching. And they should have a different kind of focus for that. Um, after they watch the video, you should be able to kind of sit with them a little bit for a little bit of the problem set um, in their book. Ask them to turn to the problem set problems. And then for the problem, don't let them do that until they watch the video because otherwise they'll do half of it wrong and then have to go back and fix it. So have them do the problem set after the video. Um, for the problem set problems, help them as much as they need. If they are able to do it independently, send them off, let them go. If they aren't, just kind of hang out and help them along the way. If they need additional practice after the problem set problems, um, in um, the other math book, um, there's more practice in the learn book. So that's the one that they normally do for homework. So I wouldn't really give them any homework unless they need extra practice at those math skills because they're already stressed out enough as it is. So having no homework is the one perk for them because they're everything's homework right now. 
Um, so you are more than welcome to, at this point, replace any of that, or supplement any of that, add whatever you want into any of that, um, add some creativity of any kind into that. Um, after math, that's usually in the afternoon, that's when we have our kind of creativity time, and that's when I can do art lessons or um, different sorts of things where they're, they're more hands-on kinds of stuff, because as the day progresses, after lunch, their attention span dwindles. So try to kind of keep that in mind, so have it be less paper pencil at that point. Um, again, having a computer, a great resource, and that's kind of the basics of our day. In math, we stopped, we finished lesson 17, so they should be on lesson 18. In math, module five, lesson 18. So if you wanted to start there, you could. Next week is spring break. Um, so you decide however you wanna do that. Um, if you want them to work through it because they've had days off already, that's up to you. If you say, hey, you know, this week's spring break, next week we're gonna do school. You, you do however you want to, that's all good. Um, other thoughts, I'm just gonna keep throwing things, as many resources as I can onto Google Classroom. Many times throughout the day, like every hour, something pops into my head and I throw it on there. Kids are submitting all kinds of really cool things and I'm just trying to keep it more as like a motivational platform for them so that they're like, hey, so-and-so did you know, uh, an art lesson, I wanna do one, or so-and-so you know, got recognition because they're you know, so far in Zern and I want that recognition too. So I'm trying to use it kind of like a motivational tool for them. So hopefully as they see their friends doing things, they'll be like, hey, maybe I should get it in gear too. So just trying. We're working here. I don't know. This is all new for me. So once again, hopefully after April 3rd, the district will give us some direction. What you do between now and then with your child is up to you. Um, I'll snap a picture of this little daily schedule and that way at least you can see it in writing. Hopefully you can understand my writing. Um, and good luck, uh, I don't know. Stay safe, stay healthy, stay sanitized, and text me if you need me. Okay, have a great day. I'll make another little video for your kiddos because I'm sure this bored them out of their mind. Okay, thanks, have a good day, bye.